I am with the Swift man himself, Mr. Jared yes, Hurd. Sir. Yes, sir. Champ, what you been up to lately, man? Man, nothing, man. Been in the gym every day. Uh, I just fought back in December. Got married in February. Congratulations. Right back in the gym, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Is there anybody in particular that you want to fight? Uh, yeah, man. For sure, I definitely want to get those losses I got back, man. All of my rematch, you know, I got three losses. One against Julie Williams, Luis Arias, and Resendiz. I got to get all those back. <laughs> but um, other than that, man, you know, the champions at my weight class, Jamel Charlo, that's one, one fight I always wanted before I retired. But, you know, he had 154, and if I don't get that, I definitely want to fight the uh, older brother, uh, Jamal Charlo. Speaking of Charlo, what was your thoughts on Charlo's fight versus Canelo? Oh, man, I feel like uh, he showed him too much respect. Oh, yeah. You know I mean, I think he was just more trying to survive and actually win the fight and not get knocked out and make it all 12 rounds. Um, he was just he was just too timid, and he didn't he didn't have no how high, high out punch, I mean, uh, punch output. And, I mean, I just think he was too, he was too, too preservative, man. He, should, he, he didn't let his hands go at all. Do you think Wade played a uh, back then at all? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Hell, yeah. As you see, like, man, this, this fight this past this weekend with Ryan Garcia and uh, Devin Haney. So, I mean, Devin, uh, Ryan Garcia said he felt weak in this fight with Javante Davis. We thought it was all cap. We thought he was talking. But when he got into the fight with Devin Haney, he, he really showed that when he rehydrated with no re rehydration cloth, he, he actually is uh, uh, something to... To watch out for so I, I the weight definitely plays a factor i mean who knows how much of a factor play with charlo and, and canelo but I, I think it do play a factor i'm glad you brought that up because what was your initial reaction to uh ryan versus uh, garcia like what like after after the fight were you shocked were you did you expect ryan to oh, shocked ain't the word <laughs> i think everybody was shocked for real for devin haney beat lomachenko he had a master class against uh reed this program you thought the same thing was going to happen against Ryan Garcia. Not that Ryan ain't a great fighter, but, you know, not only did they fight six times, I thought Ryan kind of, I think Devin Haney won the last fight, and I thought as they got older, Devin Haney was progressing to get better and better. Mm -hmm. Ryan, not saying he hasn't got better, but I just thought, you know, his 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 reflex and his athleticism is the reason what got him to where he is today because – not saying Ryan, Ryan ain't skillful. He just got super fast hands. He hit hard. I thought that Devin Haney's skills and the way he developed was going to play a part of him winning. But Ryan knew something, man. He said he, he, he don't want no rehydration clause. He said in an interview we told, he was telling somebody, I think uh, on the Breakfast Little podcast, he was like, I'm just going to let him throw a couple punches, hit it soft. But when it's time for me to throw my punches, I'm going to go in there and let my hands go. I'm going to give him some uh, some breaks. But when I get myself up and let my hands go, and that's exactly what he did. He didn't even – it's almost like I ain't going to say he didn't try, but he just knew exactly what he wanted to do. Right. Now, you, you eat, sleep, and breathe boxing. I mean, you're you one of the best fighters out there, man. You, you, do, you go through the training. You go through the fights. So you know about weight gainage and weight loss and stuff like that uh -huh. when it comes to uh, the camps. So do you think that the uh, um, 3.2 – 3.2 pounds really made that much of a difference. So I'll say this. I don't think the three pounds made a difference as far as as much as the rehydration cost played a difference in. So like when you lose up three pounds, yeah, it was probably hard to get off. He'd have probably felt drained after getting the weight off. But when he was able to rehydrate himself and get back to the right weight, that's what really matters how you feel on fight night. So I don't think the three pounds played that much of, of, of a, a factor. Mm -hmm. But if he was not able to replenish himself to a certain extent and, and gain to a certain amount of weight, I think that would play more of a factor than the three pounds. Because, I mean, once you lose the weight, you lose the weight, you rehydrate. I don't think that that bothers you that much going into fight night unless you can't rehydrate and they, they cap you out at where you can get to. And can you explain more on, I, I like what you were saying, because you explain uh, more on uh, the process of making weight. Is, is losing the last three to four pounds the hardest part about making weight? Oh, yeah, for sure, man. Like, these weight classes are, what, six, seven pounds apart? Yeah. And it's a difference that, like, I, I could make 154. There's no way I can get to 147. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's mm -hmm. like those little pounds matter. It's because we do, as fighters, we dehydrate ourselves and we sweat everything, deplenish ourselves to make that weight. And sometimes your body 
it's, 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 it's natural for your body to do this when it does start to feel dehydrated and deplenished like that. It automatically goes and it shuts down. It doesn't allow your body to lose or anymore. That's why when you say I can't, I can't get down there. They really can't get down there because their body doesn't allow them to, man. So, I mean, it, 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 it's, it's true when they say they can't. Those few pounds is it's, it's, yeah. it's tough to get off. Yeah. So when the fighter's trying to you know make the weight, how much does it really weaken him to lose that last three pounds? Uh, to be honest, like he was saying, he said no matter what he did. In that time frame, like if you gave him a few more days, he probably can get it off. Mm-hmm. But in that time frame of a few hours, you ask him when your body going through that 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 time is having a hard time is having, it's not allowing. It's not allowing. It's holding on to the water. Basically, it's feeling dehydrated, so it's not allowing us, itself to sweat anymore. Gotcha. It's holding on to the water. It's uh, it's 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 basically you're feeling fatigued, so then you don't have the energy to put into the workout. To cause your body to sweat. There's a whole bunch of stuff that come with it where you say, man, my body just won't allow me to do it. Do you believe if Devin came in at 143.2 pounds just like Ryan, that that would have made a difference in the fight to the point where he could have beat Ryan? No, not at all. Because like I said, it's what we, Ryan rehydrated to. Ryan said he got back up to about 160 that night. It's like 17 pounds he gained. So, I mean, unless Devin Haney putting the rematch clause that he couldn't rehydrate to that high, he wouldn't have felt as energized maybe, or he wouldn't have felt he was as strong as he was. That's the only thing I feel like would have played a factor, not not nothing to do with the, the day of the weigh-in and, and with Devin Haney weighing or nothing like that. Who do you have in a rematch if they both come in at the right, at the same way, the right way? Ryan Garcia still. I think he just got his number. He like, shows you he shows yeah, you that much here. He fought up six times, man. I say, like I say, he knows something. The difference between because if you really look at it, the fight with Tank too, Ron Garcia was giving Tank trouble in that second round. If Ron, Tank was holding on, he got to, he was he was winning that whole entire round. The only thing that diffused all that is Tank got that equalizer. Once he landed that shot, he got that power to stop and diffuse all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, Devin Haney does not have that. Like Ron Garcia, like he said, he said we gonna have on eight ounce gloves. It's going to be a difference than when we fought when we was kids. I'm much stronger, much bigger. I can walk through all through Devin Haney punches. He can't walk through tank punches like that, so he'd be a little more cautious. Yeah. He wouldn't be sitting back as much either, wait until he get himself together and just let his hands go because it was in that fight with Ryan and, and Devin, it was so many breaks in between where Ryan was not in, was inactive. He was not punching for the half of the round and then – the next half of the round, he is finally let his hands go, and every time he let his hands go through, he put Devin on the canvas. So, I mean, he can't do that with Tank because Tank, Tank got that same equalizer as him. So he, it ain't gonna happen. That's a good point. That's a good yeah. point. What's your thoughts on Crawford moving to 154? Uh, <laughs> to be honest with you, 154, I say Crawford can do it, man. I mean. He's special. No, he, 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 Crawford is different. So, I, I, he's one fighter like Floyd. Like, no matter what he's doing, I feel like I can never doubt him. I can never question what he's doing because he, he's a massive boxer. He, he he got the game. He know what he's doing. So, if he feel like he's confident enough to move up to 154, he can definitely do it. Um, I don't think he should ever go to 168. Don't mess with no Canelo. That's what I don't think he can do. But for sure, 154, I think he'll fit in there good. You took the words right out of my mouth yeah. because I was going to ask you, Crawford wants to fight Canelo with the How How do you see that playing out? It's going to be too much of a weight difference. I mean, Crawford is slick. Crawford is good. But it's a such thing in boxing called bricks. All right? <laughs> <laughs> and with Canelo, he, Crawford, one of them bricks, I don't care what block he do, whatever. It's like going to heavyweight, me going to heavyweight. I can block, be slick and all that. But the arm punches, you saw he did the, uh, your man, um, Callum Smith arm. Yeah. You saw he do the, the bibbo arm. All the, all that to Terrence Crawford is done. Why you think, I, I'll be honest with you, why you think Charlo didn't let his hand, was so timid to let his hands go? Because he probably felt that power. It was more like, okay. I'm yeah. cautious to go in there more than <laughs> trying to land something. You know what I'm saying? Do you think Crawford could bring his speed with him to 168? Yeah. Do you yeah, think it still would translate, you know what I mean? He would. Every, every. Every skill that Crawford has, he will translate over to 168 because he's going to be feeling real good. He's not going to be the pushing himself to make way to nothing. So he's going to be feeling real good. It's just he's not going to be able to take Canelo's power. Now, if he fights, definitely not no benefit as 
If he can fight a 168 pound that's, you know, that you can kind of match him up with and make him look good, yeah, but the top guys at 168, no. What's your thoughts on Canelo turning down 55 million plus 100% of the pay-per-view revenue to fight Benavidez and he asks for 150 to 200 million yeah. instead? This is like, the thing I feel like, to be honest with you, Canelo Alvarez has the best resume in boxing. He's done the best things in boxing. He's reached the highest level in boxing. He really does have the pull to do whatever he wants to do. But to be honest with you, man, he is a champion at 168. Like, he has the right to fight these guys. He want to go to Jaime McGear. He, they try to give him $60 million to fight David Benavidez. He can fight Jaime McGear for 30, uh, 30 plus million. Then he can go fight Edward Belinga for 30 plus million. Now he got 60 million. He said this, if you want me to step in the ring with somebody, because the way Canelo sound, he knows it's going to be a tough fight because he's denied it. He doubted himself. I never see, another thing, Canelo's <laughs> ducking him. So. But he's really ducking him, but he's doing it because he's like, if I'm going to put all this on the line, I'm going to be worth it. Out. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to cash out. And he know that Devin, uh, Benavidez is going to be a tough fight. And Saudi is now talking about actually putting together a fight for Canelo with that amount of money. So Oh, they can do it. They can do it. So it's like if you're going to do it, you gonna, he going to do it for real. Speaking of uh, Canelo versus Con uh, Munguia, what's uh -huh. your prediction, bro, for that oh, fight? It's sad to say, man. It's going to be an excellent fight because it's Mexican versus Mexican. You know how them total so fights be with the, when it comes to the Mexicans. But Jaime McGill is going to be on a highlight reel. All right. <laughs> now, is he going to be on a highlight reel on the plus or the minus side? The minus side. Okay, okay. Canelo is the perfect counterpuncher, right? Just imagine this. Canelo being the perfect counterpuncher has an enormous amount of power. Can go all the way up to 175 and compete with all those guys hitting hard as them. Then you got somebody who is very offensive, right? Not defensive at all. He's going to let his hands go. That's the best opportunity for a counterpuncher to counter a person that let his hands go all the time. And then you got one of the best counterpunchers in there. I don't know. I'm telling you right now. It's gonna be a evil. A, it's gonna be a slip up, or it's gonna be a slip right. But he's gonna slip and hit Harmon McGee with something. It's gonna be a highlight run knockout. Got a, a couple of more fights coming on. Just gonna get your opinion on. Uh, we got Fury versus Usyk. Oh yeah. How do you see that one playing out? Who wins that? That that reason why is is that one is so tough is because you really want to look at that Francis Ngannou fight and judge Fury off that. But then again, you say you can't because you look at the Wilder fight and, and, and the, the Klitschko fight and all the other fights yeah. and be like, he's a dog. And I really believe that he took France and Ngannou lightly. And Anthony Joshua saw what he did in Tyson Fury. It ain't taken lightly at all. That's why he had so much success. So to be honest with you, I'm going to still go Tyson Fury. The way I see your man right now, he looks nothing like he did. His whole body transformed like he did in that uh, Francis Ngannou fight. He done slimmed down. He looked like he's taking this fight serious like he did Deontay Wilder. So I got to go with Tyson Fury only because Usyk isn't a true heavyweight, and I just feel like he's going to be able to pull it off. He got the heart, though. He, he do got, he got, the, got the heart, heart though. He, he can do, scratch. I just feel scratch. like Tyson Fury going to pull it off somehow. Last prediction from you, man. Tank versus Frank. Uh-huh. How do you see that one playing out? I, I, one thing I can't say, <laughs> and that's not that's not a discredit for mom, but one thing I can say, it's going to be competitive style enough because Tank has the lowest output in boxing right now. Mm -hmm. As one of the champions, he has the lowest output. He he's not he's he's very precise on his punches when he throw him. He want to be accurate. He land them, and Frank Martin is also sharp. It's going to be a chess match starting off, so that's why it's going to look a little competitive starting off until Tank lands some. But when Tank do land, he going to hurt Frank Martin, and he's going to take my body. Tank uh, actually sparred Frank uh, Frank Martin, and they said it was good work. Did yeah. you hear about that? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be competitive, man. It's going to be it's going to be Pieti, uh, it's going to be competitive. That's what I'm saying because Frank Martin is very sharp, and Tank is sharp, so it's going to be like kind of like a chess match. Until Javon's head lands. And who knows what round it's going to be, if it's early, if it's not early, but it's going to be like a chess match because Tank's not going to overpower him, just throwing a whole bunch of punches. It's going to be them sitting back, trying to count each other, 
try to show who's a better boxer yeah. and then tilt Tate land and actually hurt him. That's what that's Man, I definitely thank you for your time, champ. Is there anything else you want to share or you want to send to your fans or the box fans around the world, man? Yeah, man. Hey, listen, just keep tuning in to your man, Swift. I'm not done yet. I got about a few more years, two, two, two more years at least. And uh, hopefully I got something coming up maybe in June. Uh, it should be here at home, man. And, man, uh, yeah, back to the top, man, you know. I had a few setbacks, but we ain't done yet, baby. Y'all see what it is, Swift, man.